Welcome back to Inside Politics. Our guest today, Dr. Carol Swain. She's a candidate for mayor in the August 1st election here in Nashville. Dr. Swain, let's talk a couple of issues. Affordable housing was a big issue four years ago in the mayor's race. It's an even bigger issue now. And looking on your campaign website, you've indicated there's perhaps a federal program called Opportunity Zones that might be helpful to you in finding a way that we can have more affordable housing opportunities in Nashville. And you want to get the private sector involved with the city providing some, some land. Is that, is, that, is that basically one way you want to well, approach it? first of all, my housing plan is called Blue Collar Housing, and the reason I call it that, I'm focused on the population. The average Nashvilleian earns about $50,000 a year. That population can't afford homes that are three and $400,000. The city owns about 2,000 parcels of land. What I would like to do is make some of that land available to contractors and developers who would build affordable homes that would sell for less than $200,000. And what developers and contractors have told me, we've met with groups of them, that it's the land cost that drives up the uh, housing prices, and that if we, if the city provided the land, they can build homes that would sell for under 200000 and if we use the modular, modular technology that's used by um, Marriott and many of the restaurants and hotels, we can get the price down even further. And there are other um, new technological advances in housing that can reduce costs. And so I plan to be very creative, but it starts with not borrowing, you know, $500 million or $350 million, but working with the land that the city owns and developers and contractors in a fair and transparent process. So some lots are large, some are small, and so we would have to work. And we'd also have to have deeds so that people wouldn't just buy the homes and flip them after a year or two, because it really is, we're trying to meet a need so that the people who live and work in Nashville that are serving us every day can afford to live here and not be pushed further and further out. You responded to a survey I think News Channel 5 sent out earlier about affordable housing and you, you mentioned that you'd like to see the go th city go through the building code and zoning processes to identify obstacles that are making it hard to rehab yes. older facilities. What yes. particular zone, what specific things do you have in mind changing in Let terms of the codes this. and zoning regulations? I've had a number of developers tell me last year and this year that they've always wanted to build affordable housing but that when they go before city council that, uh, or, or, or before the zoning board, that they are turned down. And their sense is that the city doesn't want it. I want to review all of that. But another obstacle is uh, the permit process. I'm being told that it takes nine months to get a permit unless you're an insider. If you're part of the old boys network, you can get yours maybe the next day. But for the average person, by the time they get a permit, some of the deals have fallen through. And so I would like to bring efficiency to government, look into the zoning and uh, the permits to make sure it's fair and that we're not working against the interests of the people in favor of the, one, of the individuals who want to build the luxury, luxury apartments and complexes. This week we also had for the first time in Metro history the, the council rejected a tax increase yes. but by in doing so they allowed Mayor Briley's budget which didn't have a tax increase to go in effect by default. What is your reaction to that? If you're a mayor you'll have to inherit that budget. Well first of all that budget should never have been uh, allowed to go into effect because it counts on revenue that doesn't really exist. Uh, it includes money from the parking meters and the sale of the district energy system. Mm -hmm. Neither one of those things have been approved by uh, city council. So if you it's a violation of the Metro Charter and so the first thing I would do as mayor is that I would never violate the Metro Charter. The budget should have been balanced. And So, so what would you do if you inherit inherit that budget when you become mayor in October? What do you do, go to court to try to get the budget no, the declared invalid? valid? The first you, thing I would do it? is uh, we would have to recalculate it because there's, thir there's at least $44 million yeah. in there that doesn't exist. And so it's not a balanced budget. I'm not going to go to court. There may be other people that go to court about it, but I think that well, what there's... What would you cut else in the budget to make to get rid of that hole? I'm sorry. Oh. I don't mean to say well, it like I mean, that. What, what, well, let me tell you that I think that there's tremendous waste. Uh, between 2015 and 2019, um, revenues in Nashville have been up 23 percent, and that uh, amounted to about $440 million in new revenue. So Nashville does not have a revenue problem. 
They don't need to raise property taxes. They have a spending problem. And until the next mayor gets in there and can find out where the waste is, then we don't know the true financial state of the city. We know that there's tremendous waste and there's money being given out, uh, you know, to various groups. And the next mayor has to get in there and look. So uh, I think that one of the places that we can look and uh, Councilman C Cooper has mentioned this, is the convention center. The fact that they have, uh, you know, for their debt servicing, I think it's about 40 million. Last year, they had 124 million that came in through the hotel um, taxes. I think that we, as a city, need to look at that deal to see whether or not some of that revenue can be used to plug the hole. Property taxes have not been raised in Nashville for eight years now. Um, when you take office next year, are you going to pledge that you won't raise taxes the first year in office or maybe even the entire four, first four years you're in office? You know, I think it's uh, foolish sometimes to make a pledge, but I don't foresee any conditions under which you need to raise taxes right now because our revenues are increasing. It's not a revenue problem, it's a spending problem. And th there's tremendous waste. And so one of the things I would like to do is incentivize even the employees to point out waste in their own departments. And there has to be some forensic audits. I mean, there's some departments and divisions that need to be audited because we're not sure where the money is. And I think that uh, that's that would be my priority. I also believe that when it comes to uh, our first responders, the police, the fire, the dispatchers, the, teach the teachers are not first responders, but mm. you know they're important, Metro employees, that we need to prioritize their needs, and my budgets would do that because the city is only as strong as the people who work for it. Carol Swain's our guest. She's a candidate for mayor in the August 1st election. Back to continue our conversation on the other side of this break. Stay with us. Mm -hmm.